All right, people. Well, you know what? Everybody and their mother's doing one of these videos, and I wanted to go ahead and do one of these videos. But really, I just really wanted to use that picture. This picture that you see right here, I, I I've, I've, I've held on to this picture forever, and I was like, I want to use this as a thumbnail for something. I, I want to use this picture, and I, there's no other time that you can use this picture right here than now. All right, so I'm gonna be doing my top ten decks of the April 2015 TCG uh, format. And as you can see by my trolley ass picture, no, Black Wings are not one of the top decks. No, they're way, way too slow. So, no. So, I feel like I took a shot at Stu. <laughs> I'm sorry, Stu, but when I saw you put Black Wings on your list, I'm like, no. No, absolutely no. So, I'm going to go ahead and do mine. I'm going to do my top 10 decks. I sat there and I thought about it, and I was like, no, this, maybe this, maybe this, maybe this. You know, the easier ones were... The, be the you know the top one that's easy but i'm gonna go ahead and go over what i think are gonna be the top 10 decks of the format i generally don't like to do 10 because 10 is difficult five is much easier that's why we have top fives on the channel but i will go ahead and do the 10 because five would be way too easy five five to five is obvious but 10 that's a, you know that's a little bit debatable but not black ones all right so i'm gonna go ahead and get started off so number 10 uh, i'm gonna say glads yes uh Glads, no reason, there's a reason why I'm going to say Glads. The reason why I'm going to say Glads is because of the hype, you know. The story has been at one for years now, and finally it's back at three in the TCG. There's, the way, no, there's no way in hell that people are going to take their Glad deck, which is, of course, budget now, slap it together and run down to, you know, their regionals or YCS, you know. their strength in numbers. If there are enough people hop on the glad train glads are gonna top it's, it's simple as that you know depending on the numbers you know even if you know the top deck necros even if there's a whole bunch of necros at the top seats it, hey if a glad player faces a glad player that faces a glad player that faces a glad and they keep facing glad players until they eventually reach the top table so uh you know i just think that the the, the wagon's gonna be full full of lots of people hopping on you know there are people who wanted to hop on glides when they only have a star every single format there would be someone who would be like all right new format new list i didn't get the star but hey time for glad this is gonna be glad's format this is gonna be glad format every single time so you know what if this is glad format let me see it i don't think so that's why you're number 10 because you're so slow like no no, 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 you're, you know, you're way too slow in comparison to the other decks and the top decks, you know, you know, it's nice, you got your three zones, you got your three merchants, but I just don't see it, you know, but they're strength in numbers, so that's why I put you at 10, there's a ton of other decks that I was considering to put, you know, on this list, but I had to put Glads at 10 just because of the hype train, I had to. So that, there we go, number 10. Number 9, I'm going to say Fire Fist. I think that Fire Fist, uh, we, know, we never got an opportunity to try out the strength of this whole 3 access thing. Like, literally, as soon as we got the freaking rooster to go with the spirit for the 3 access thing that was kicking all that butt and doing all that good shit and OCG, we got a hit. Like, immediately it got hit. You know, so, uh, well, we didn't even get to even try it out. So this might be the first time to go ahead and see this deck. And I think that people are going to try it out. I think, just like with the hype train with Glads, this is going to be another hype train. The reason why I'm going to put Fire Fist above Glads is because they have a better Necros matchup. And by that, I mean, they can go ahead and handle that Djinn lock with Bear. While Glads, they Djinn lock you, you're fucked. Like, I'm sorry, you're fucked. But, you know, you, they go the Djinn lock, you're like, alright, Tenki, search for Bear, Bear, throw the chair, woo, I'm free unless they block it. But, you know, that's a little bit better. You know, they have... The triple wolf bark, you know, they have the three axes plus the four axes. I think that fire fists are going to be a stronger deck than glads, but they're still not there yet. But I do think that, you know, the hype of being able to try out this three, three axis is going to um, do well. So I think that people are going to hop on the train. So there you go. All right. Number eight I have, and I debated this one and I talked to Sun out, and I'm going to say heroes. I'm going to say heroes are number eight. The reason why I'm going to say heroes are number eight. Is because I know Stratus is still not here. I know Cypher is banned. But that quick access to Dark Law is very powerful. Very, very powerful. Being able to just go, all right, hero lives, bam, Shadow Miss, get that, bam, bam, here's Dark Law. One card, you know? That's very powerful. A, a searchable, quick access to Dark Law. And Dark Law is going to be a very, very important card this format. Uh, just that quick access is uh, very powerful for heroes to do. Now, what is uh, good for them, but then also hurtful, is the fact that Vanities got hit. Good, because, you know, you if you have your hero monster and then you play Mass Change, you trade your monster. So, literally, you go, some my hero, Mass Change, Vanity, your opponent goes Vanities, your monster's tributed, you neg two, for nothing, for nothing. So, that hurt. 
that hurt. So that card's now at one, so that's a little bit better. But the only problem is that now you don't have three vanities. So yes, you got the Dark Law, but you're gonna need a little do a little bit more to protect the castle here. You know, Dark Law is bread and butter. You know, I also have to consider that the new, you know, a new Anki card or whatever is quick for OTKs and you know more hero support. Now, would the deck do a little bit better without Stratos? I mean, they might have to, you know, a couple more interesting plays, but the deck wouldn't change much, you know. Stratos doesn't need to be unbanned for heroes to be what heroes are. Heroes are fine. The way they are, Stratos doesn't need to come off banned. But that quick access to Dark Law, the quick OTKs with Anki, uh, you know, just in general, I think that I know people love heroes, and I know that people are going to hop on it. So just like people hop on Glads because, you know, they're you know they're back, and pop on Fractures because they're back, heroes have always been here. People like heroes. Uh, I was thinking about putting Infernoids in the spot, but I kind of felt like uh, people play more heroes than Infernoids, and I feel like there's going to be a stronger, more consistent OTK deck uh, than Infernoids that I have on this list, and that's actually the upcoming number. So, number seven, Dragons. Dragons, um, you know, yes, the Dragon Rulers are banned. That is true. But it doesn't stop you from doing the Dark Matter OTK. And the reason why it doesn't stop you from doing the Dark Matter OTK is because of that motherfucker who I... Oh, and you guys know I hate this motherfucker because, God, he's... Oh, like, if this deck actually, you know, blows up and is actually really good, I'm going to point fingers at this motherfucker once again because he has been in way too many top decks. Eclipse Wyvern. Eclipse Wyvern is still here because these dragons can utilize... The baby chaos dragon is not the big chaos dragon, but the baby chaos dragon to go ahead and do it. They can use chaos monsters. They can use that BLS, them chaos sorcerers. They can use, you know, the you know the light pulsar. They can use the herotics. You know, so this deck is gonna be a very fast, aggressive OTK deck, and especially since they have three convocations, people are gonna go right back to herotics. They they do. When it's at three, they love it. When they go, when it goes to two, now nah, they don't wanna play it. Then it goes back up to three, they're like, oh yeah, let's do it again. And then they go back down to two, and they're like, oh, no, no, I don't wanna play it. So, there you go. Back to three, products, dragons, dark matter, OTK, do the damage. That's it, that's it, you know? Like I said, I, I was weighing, I was like, I was like, dragons and throwing and I would have to give it to dragons. I feel like dragons have more consistent send, they have the, the three dragon shards, they have, you know, they have dragon ravine back, you know, they have more consistent sending than just simply just millage with light swords, and I know in Fernoids, they have their, you know, their two charge of light brigade, but, you know, if anything, I think they would say, like, you know, like, the, the, the three charge of light brigades are nice and all, but I would really like that second monster gate, and then they never got it, so, maybe the next list, maybe the next list, you know, uh, this list, we copied off of the, OC TCG copied off the OCG a lot, I'd say at least 90% of this list, which is awesome, which is fine, because it, it actually turned out okay for this list, but there are some things that we didn't copy off of completely, and I think we're going to go ahead and go with set precedents, you know, so this upcoming next prediction might be much easier than it usually is because we can just look at set precedents of OCG. So what OCG did, as long as it didn't completely just sh break OCG, they'll just probably copy and paste it. So over in OCG, they did put, you know, Monster Gate up to three. So we all they have to do is look at and see, how, well, hmm, how are Infernoids doing over there? You know, we want to sell Infernoids, we want to make a profit, but we don't want to break the hell out of them. So, I don't know. Oh, Monster Gate's not doing anything at three? I mean, it's helping, you know, them, but it's not breaking the hell of them? All right, we'll go ahead and do that, too. You know, it's as simple as that. So, uh, yeah, I just feel like Dragons are going to be much more consistent, much stronger. You know, they could play the Chaos cards, you know. You know, they have Gores at three. They don't play much back row, so, they, you know, they're just going to be pushing for that damage. So, uh, it's going to be, like, more of a Chaos variant with a little bit of Herotic Stun in there. You know, and with Ultimaya coming out soon, I can, I can definitely see Dragons, in general, just doing things. All right, so that is number seven on my list. So moving on to number six, Ritual Beast. Ritual Beast, uh, I, I underestimated this deck. I really did. I thought they were just kind of booty. I, I wasn't impressed by them. But they've been doing things, you know. They're, they're not, you know, the tippity top. That's why they're number six. But, you know, they've been doing things. I've been seeing them top a couple of times. I've seen them being played, winning, and, you know, putting in that work. You know, they have some very powerful cards. The power is all in their traps, you know, all in their traps. Uh you know, the ability to go ahead and summon, like, their, their, like their double sword technique, call the, kind of call the hunting card, the one card that blows up their monsters for, you know, a ritual beast or spirit beast on the field or whatever. You know, they have some play. Also, the fact that Vanities got hit. Because Vanities hurt that deck so fucking bad. Just the fact that you would go, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and turn my ritual beast to target these two and then resummon them. And then you just go, Vanities, they neck so hard it's not even funny. So the fact that Vanities goes down... I mean, went down to one. Definitely helps the Ritual Beast. And uh, I think that they might be able to pull a little bit off. You know, they just got to watch out for Necros. Because 
Necros are Necros. All right, so I think Ritual Beasts are number six. So moving on to number five, I have Cleese. Cleese are still here, people. I mean, they're just not there, you know? Cleese, I would say last format when they had everything, I'd say definitely deck number two. I have no doubt about it, deck number two. But they got hit so bad, so bad. You're probably saying like, oh, all they lost was, you know, you know, one scout and two sacrifices. It's not much. That's not the problem. The problem is they lost their floodgates, and everybody knows that Cleese were floodgate dot deck. Like that, that was that, that was it. You get them floodgates on with Cleese. They lost their floodgates. They have one vanities and one skill drain. At least in the LCD, they still have three skill drain. One vanities, one skill drain. The consistency that can be easily made up. You know, they can easily just go ahead and throw in some freaking odd eyes up in the deck, and then bam, they're okay. You know, they'll they'll get that freaking uh that that scout. That's not the problem. The problem is that they don't have the floodgates, that strength, that power, that power to be able to utilize skill drain like that to lock down your opponent with vanities, and you know their monsters die, but they go back to the extra deck. They don't have those cards anymore. So I think the deck is gonna change. Do I think that the deck has turned into complete crap? No, but I do not think that it's as strong as it was last format. Definitely not. You know, with one sacrifice and two scouts, that hurts. But the skill drain, the vanity is the one that 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 was a little bit, that was a little bit in the nail of the coffin. I think that definitely pushed Cleese down to a tier two deck because of that. So, uh, but they're still a good deck. I'd still get them notified. You know, they're still the best pendulum deck that we have so far in TCG. So you know, and pendulum is a very powerful mechanic. So you can't get much better than that, right? All right. So, that is number five. So, number four, I have Shadals. And I know, you're probably thinking like, whoa, 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 you paint Shadals before Klee's? With Shadals, I'm thinking about what they can do now, what happened to them on the list, and their future prospects. So, as you know, Shadals in OCG land were doing their thing. You know, in OCG land, they, Shadals went to the so extreme that they had to, you know, ban Construct. They did. They hurt Shadals so much in the OCG. Here... And TCG Land, we haven't really touched them. I mean, besides taking away their Super Poly, we haven't really done much. All right, so take that into consideration. They didn't get touched on this list at all. Vanity's got hit to one, so that, you know, lessens what you can stop their freaking Shadal Fusion from doing. Also, take into consideration that the Star Seraphs are coming, you know, and Shadal Star Seraphs were, you know, putting in that work over in OCG. I'm not sure if they're going to do much here because Shockmaster is banned. I'm not sure how that will interact with, you know, the TCG, but... That's it also thing. You also gotta consider that the water fusion. Amalith. Amalith is the water fusion, you know, it beats Necros. You know, there's a kind of talk about how should all players are gonna do it, you know. Are they gonna go ahead and you know run with the spell book because blue you know, blue boy is water. Are they gonna go ahead and run two more You know what I personally I think they're gonna do I think they're gonna run Fire and Ice Hand. Because not only does you know Ice Hand allow you on the lift, but Fire Hand also allows you to get access to that Gristall, which they really haven't been able to pull off. So being able to access a powerful card like Gristall, along with Amulets, along with, you know, the deck saving power of Fire and Ice Hand, uh, that just puts puts them over the edge, over Cleese. Because literally, if it's that what should also turn into, where they run Fire and Ice Hand, Fire and Ice Hand will destroy Cleese. So that's going to be uh, my consideration for a reason why Shadals. Uh, Shadals, you know, they haven't been hit, and I really do think that, uh, you know, maybe they could possibly come back to the former glory. I want really want to see it, you know, because should they have gotten hit on this list, this previous list of April? Yes, they should have. Uh, you know, uh, it seems like Konami was so busy copying and pasting from OCG that they didn't look at the beginning of the format. They, it looked like they were, copy, they were busy half copy-paste, half look at the end of the format. Because they, because clearly, even Necros got hit, and that's at the end of the format. But they didn't look at the beginning of the format where Shadals were putting in that work, you know. They didn't see that. So, um, I think possibly Shadals, with uh, not being touched and, you know, getting some new support and the strength of Amalus and firing the ice hand and all that good shit, that they might be able to come back to the floor in former glory and, you know, represent uh, this format. So, definitely should also number four. Number three, I have Teller Knights. Teller Knights, uh, once again, no touch, no touch, no Rudder hit, no Dinev hit, no Altair hit, no nothing. Uh, Teller Knights are a little bit stronger, you know. Uh, they started stepping away from Vanities, you know, while everybody was still going with the strength of triple Vanities. Teller Knights started stepping away from Vanities. So, losing that those Vanities doesn't hurt much to Teller Knight. But Teller Knights still have everything that they've had before. The reason why I wanted to go ahead and put them a little better Shadals is because literally Diamond just turned that shit off. You know, Diamond's just, you, you make that Diamond and it hurts, you know? You make that Triver and they go back to, and your fusions go back to your extra deck, that hurts. That really does hurt. And I definitely think that uh, Teller Knights will stay uh, as a fairly tier 1.5 deck along with Shadals, tier 1.5. 
uh, you know, if I was, if I would say anything, I'd say like, you know, Glad's and Fireface, those are like tier like, tier, tier point five, maybe three. You know, the heroes and dragons. Well, the heroes are probably like tier two point five. Uh, the dragons, I gotta see. You know, I gotta see uh, how consistent they can get that dark matter OTK off. Uh, Ritual Beast, I say they're like tier two. Cleaves are like tier two. Jaws one point five. Telonite's one point five. Uh, but yeah, Telonite's. I do think that, you know, with them being untouched and them having, you know, easy access to uh, Castella Knight Diamond, uh, it's a very powerful play. And, uh, you know, I definitely would put them as number three. All right, so that's number three. Number two, I bet you can't guess this, uh, BA. You know, there's a ton of debate on which deck is stronger. You know, BA, Teller Knight, Shadal. I had to say BA is number two. I definitely put BA and Necros are at the top. Those are the top decks. And uh, those are which we quote quote unquote tier one, uh, you know. Bs they got hit, they got hit, they got tour guy down to one, which is fine. Everybody thinks, oh well, tour guy is down to one, so BA is turning into a steaming pile of shit. Like, uh, no, no, no. Bas are still very powerful. Like they, you know, they didn't, they still had triple Dante, they still had triple fire lake, and they can literally still do shit. Like you know, they even got cards back you know what hurts most more than tour guide is the fact that vanities got hit because vanities you know that was a pretty powerful card you know and they definitely utilized it but uh you know they can still play fine without it you know they have access to a very powerful card that doesn't neg them of course being divine wrath uh you know they have access to dark wall of course shuttles too i forgot to mention that too but you know uh, with uh, mass chain second but they don't neg like shuttles because shuttles you pitch it for cost you don't get the effect bas you get the effect so, uh, access to, uh, you know, Dark Law, Bitch of the Burning Abyss, if you didn't know. That's actually his full name. And, uh, Triple Fire Lake still. So, I definitely do think that, um, BA is definitely the second strongest deck, you know. Uh, one, hitting Tour Guide the one, it's enough of a hit. And it's clear, pretty clear that TCG Economic didn't want to kill BA, you know. They wanted to hit BA, yes. But what's a way to hit BA without hitting any BA stuff? Hit Tour Guide, done, you know. So, uh... I still think that without, you know, triple tour guide, uh, BS can do it. I mean, maybe they'll even wise up and maybe do what I do on Daily Duels and play some Crane Crane, you know? Crane Crane, it's kind of like tour guide, except from the deck, it's from the graveyard, and you can also synchro summon into Virgil. So maybe BA players, you want to try out some Crane Crane? I was like, what the fuck? Why is there no Crane Crane? So, definitely, uh, Burning Abyss. And, oh my god, I forgot, I forgot what that card is. Hold on, let me search it up. Let me search it up, because I'm going to tell you this card, and you're going to be like, oh... Yeah, I forgot that was a card that BAs can run. Well, uh, well, I guess we don't have, you know, tour guides thing. Oh, there it is. Dark Eruption. Remember that card? Dark Eruption. Normal spell. Let me tell you about it. Dark Eruption. Normal spell card. Target one Dark Monster with 1,500 less attack in your graveyard at the target to your hand. Hmm. What Dark Monster has 1,500 less attack? Oh, yeah. All right. That's right. Tour guide. So, I have one tour guide, three Dark Eruptions. That's four tour guides. So, how did you hurt me? How did you hurt me? Hmm? You know, I can also grab, I can really grab, grab almost all the Burning Abyss monsters. The only one I can't grab back is Sir, but I can grab back, I can grab back Graf, I can grab back Skarn, I can grab back, you know, Farfa, and I can grab back a Dante, return it back to the extra deck. Like, Dark Corruption is gonna be a thing, people. I mean, if they're wise, because that's a very powerful card. This pretty much just mends, amends every single thing that you got hit. You know, you, you lost your two guides, bam, there you go, Dark Corruption. Forgot about that card, didn't you? So, definitely Burning Abyss, number two. And number one, which is so obvious that I don't even know why I'm announcing like this. Uh, of course, Necros. Uh, Necros, Necros, Necros. They only list, literally lost like three cards. Like literally, like what? Two preparations and one Bionic. Oh, wow. They're so hurt. They're quaking in the boots. No, no. Necros are going to be the top deck. Now, what I'm wondering is that I said BAs and Necros are both tier one. I said that. Bam, bam. Head to head tier one. Now, what I'm wondering is how powerful in comparison you know i really you know they were still you know going neck to neck you know it was like you know necros and cleaves and ba ba you know especially with that ba player who beat that necros player you know and you know and that one ycs you know so i think that ba's can fight necros but the question is what's the numbers what's the strength numbers how's the matchup how's the plays you know what what do necros have over ba's definitely a consistency and b that Jinjin Lock. That Jinjin Lock is what literally pushes it over the edge. Literally, everybody, last format, everybody had Vanities. Everybody had triple Vanities. Everybody can Vanities everybody. That's fine. Now, since Vanities that one, unless you get that one Vanities, the only people who's going to be Vanities-esque anybody is Necros with their releaser, which they should have banned, but they didn't. 
And I think that Rooster is really going to be a big factor. Just being able to be like, huh, well, I got my own special kind of vanities. And they should have banned it, but they did it. And <sighs> Necros are just going to be so good, you know? They literally lost three cards. Two preparations and a brown. All right, well, what? You can run, what, more shred? You know, if you didn't run three shred already, run three shred. If you didn't run rudder, run rudder already. Like, it, you don't have to format and change the way the deck is like OCG is. OCG has way more hits from her uh, for Necros than we do. And right now, that was just like the tap on the head. And we're going to have to wait a while before they, you know, they get punched in the face and then maybe killed. But, you know, that, that wasn't enough to make Necros not even the top tier deck, you know. They will still be the top tier deck and tell the next list or something amazing happens and what we can see from set presidents from OCG I'm not seeing anything that's stronger than Necros right now I mean maybe maybe Ignites because they have a strong OTK possibility but uh right now it just seems like Necros are going to be dominating this format now definitely tier one maybe tier zero depending on how Burning Abyss can keep up with them because Burning Abyss can't keep up with them or if you know Shadals because that's the problem Yes, Shadals in the future, when they get Amalith, will be able to fight against Necros. That's great, because Amalith. But the problem with that is, is that, of course, Necros don't really special summon from the extra deck unless, you know, they have that Evolved Chain. But if they have that Evolved Chain, they're going to go ahead and hit you with that Jin Lock anyway, so you're not even going to activate Shadal for you. So let's assume that they don't have the Evolved Chain, they're not doing that, they're just doing Necros, right? You have Shadal Fusion, you better have a Water Monster in your hand. You, you better have a Water Monster in your hand, because if you don't have a Water Monster in your hand, then what are you doing, right? So, that's the problem. That's the problem with Shadals right now, is that they need that Water Monster in hand, because they're not going to be able to just go ahead and just fuse from the deck like that, unless, they have, you know, unless the next one probably does have a monster summon from the extra deck. You know, the matchup was already pretty bad, and of course, Amalith helps, but, you know, they got to get that, that, they need to get Amalith out fast, consistent, and without the assist of the opponent having something from the extra deck. And that might be a problem for Shadal. So I'm I'm wanting to go ahead and see what's going to happen with Shadal's when it comes to the Necro matchup in the future when they actually have their anti-Necro card. So, there we go. I actually did it. I sat here and I talked for what seems like forever. But there you go. Those are my top 10 decks. So in the comment section below, go ahead and tell me what you guys think are the top 10 decks of the April 2015 TCG format until whenever the balance is because Konami didn't post a time or another date which is odd so I hope that you guys enjoyed this top 10 list this you know top 10 decks of the format in my opinion and uh you know I will just see you whenever I do another one of these kind of videos all right people thanks for watching